If you've watched any of my other typography videos on my YouTube channel, you'll know that typography can make or break a design layout. And that goes for web layouts as well. So today what I want to do is I want to take you through the web application archetype and show you how you can get perfect styling and balance for your digital typography. So let's jump over and take a look at archetype. Okay, so here we are in archetype. To get to archetype in your web browser, you will need to type archetypeapp.com and you'll be presented with the same screen that you see here. There are some helpful little tip boxes which will appear as you click on each section. You can switch those off after you're used to using the app. So let's close that. This is the main window which presents you with your H1s all the way down to H6 and will show you your paragraph text as well. The app will automatically save changes. I'm not sure if you need to be signed in. I personally have created an account because with the app, you can actually save favorite pairings, which is really handy if you want to get back to use those again and to copy the code that you will send to your developer. You can turn off the background grid. You can also change the color of the background grid really easily. Let's put that back to white because it's easier to see. And over here on the left, you have a menu we have a desktop view, which is what we're looking at at the moment, and you also have a mobile view. Now you'll see when I click from desktop to mobile that the fonts are different. You can actually export code from Archetype to have different fonts in mobile view as opposed to desktop view, or you can set them so that they're both the same. So it gives you a nice bit of functionality there. If you had a reason to have different fonts when someone was in mobile view, then you can do that. The next bit is to pick the fonts. So let's go ahead and do that. Another little uh, pop-up box for us there. So it gives us a heading and a paragraph. And what you can do then is you click on the headings box. So at the moment it's archival black chosen. As you move your mouse cursor down the list, it will automatically change your heading font so you can see that. So you don't have to click on each one. So that speeds things up. It makes things a lot quicker for you to kind of scroll through. Now these are all of the Google fonts. So you would go through, you can narrow it down. So you can narrow it down to just serif Google fonts, sans serif, display, handwriting, and monospace. So let's say we wanted to go with Fira Mono, we would just click on that and that sets the font. Then we would click on body copy and choose another one. So I'm going to just choose a serif one. Uh, let's very quickly choose, let's choose Amiri Regular. I'll click on that. You can see now that that's set there and I will click done. Let's say you're not the biggest expert at picking fonts that work well together. Well, I have created a video previously on the channel which shows you how to use four or five different font pairing tools. You should see a link for that appear at the top of your screen now. I will also include a link to that video in the comments section. Archetype does have some suggestions for you. So if you scroll down below where the fonts are that you're choosing manually, you can see it gives you some examples of font pairings. And if you keep scrolling down the page, it will just continually add font pairings. Some of them don't work too well in my opinion, so it might be better looking at some of those font pairing tools which I've mentioned in another video. If you find some that you like or you have one which you, you like that you've created yourself, you can click on the little heart button and that will actually save it into my favorite pairs. So it's handy to build up a library of your favorite font pairings inside Archetype. Let's click back to pair suggestions. Okay, you can also view the fonts on a dark background by clicking the white A and it will inverse the screen for you. That's handy. I, 
I sometimes prefer to use the dark background with white text, um, depending on how the layout I'm working on or the design that I'm working on is going to look. Most of you will probably want to use dark on white as that's how most people are used to reading text. So now that we've done that and we've, we've set the uh, text for our desktop, you can then go to mobile and set the same fonts for that one. We're just going to stick with the desktop for now. Next thing you can do is you can define the sizes. So you can see here that it's saying it uses a modular scale to set the correct sizing relationships for all the typographic elements. And that's the important thing here is you want that consistency. You want it to look natural. And by doing this mathematically, it will look natural to the viewer. So you can change the setting of the base font size. Um, right now it's at 1.6. If we change that to 1.8, it changes the size here of all of these and over on the left you will see that it in real time changes the size as well. Let's put it to two and if you keep an eye on the text you can see that it got bigger but it makes everything bigger in relationship to this scale ratio here which is currently at 1.25. If we put this back to 1.6 for the base font size and then we change the scale ratio to 1.5. You can see now everything has got much bigger in terms of scale of this base font size, but everything is still mathematically scaling um, in relationship to one another. So let's put this back to 1.25 so that we can see everything. Oh, we've got an extra point in there. Okay, so now we've got here, we've got H1 down to H6 and we've got size for our paragraph text. But let's say we want to have a, a larger H1 than just, you know, um, the one above H2. What you can do is you can go up to this really large one here, for example, and choose that as your H1 and it will swap it out. And you can see here that it's made it much, much bigger over on the left. Um, and then the next one down would be H2 here or you could maybe make H2 this one. So you're kind of jumping a couple of sizes uh, between your H1, H2, and then down to your H3s and H4s. So you can play around with that. I'm gonna put that back to the way it was. So I'm gonna change that one back to H1 here and change this one back to H2. Okay, so let's just click out of that and it will take it back to your main screen once you click done. The next thing you can do is adjust the spacing. So you can change the, the global line height of everything. Right now it's at three. If we make it two, you will see everything get closer together. So the screen changed there and you can see all the lines became a lot tighter together. Let's put it back to three. and everything has increased again. Now what you can do, the great thing with Archetype is you can actually go in and you can change each element independently, not just globally. So let's say we want to change the line height for this heading element. We would click Edit Element and then we can go in and we can actually change the font size independently. We can change the line height. So if we move this scroll bar you can see the line height changing. Let's put that back to, I think it was on nine. Well, let's leave it at eight. You can change the letter spacing, which will increase the spacing of the letters in your heading. Put that back to zero. And then you can change the bottom margin, which is the spacing between the bottom of your heading and the paragraph or the next heading which you have. So if we change that to, let's change that to two. You can see now that the gap between is changing. Let's change that to one. And you can see there that the spacing is all changing. So let's put that back to three. And then we will click done. Okay, and you can do that for every element that you have on the page here. So you can do it for your paragraph, 
Uh, you can change the color of the paragraph text and change the color of your headings. Then what you can do is you can click on view preview and it will show you how that works. You can have it show the exact pixel sizes, you can show the um, font size, the spacing and line height, all of that so that you've got a very, very good accurate view of what is happening with your text. Then you can download the fonts. So the Google fonts which you've selected for your layout, you can actually download those locally to your computer and install them as system fonts. You can export to Sketch so that you can have it in Sketch and you can then also export as CSS, which is the important one if you're going to be sending this to a web developer or if you have a developer team. So you would click on export as CSS. There's some instructions here, but here's all of the CSS code for everything that we have set in Archetype. So all of this here is now available in the CSS code, which you can send directly to a web developer, which means that they then have all of the exact layouts, styling, and line spacing that you want in your design for your website or another digital app where you want really tight control over how that text will look. So that's my overview and quick tutorial on Archetype. I know that if I work with web developers, they are very, very glad to get direct CSS code giving them the styling and spacing for all of the typography I want in my designs. It's much better than them having to go into a Photoshop or a sketch drawing to lift and try to eyeball how that text should work. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up on it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I do release regular videos on design, branding and typography, which you will find useful. And make sure you click on the little bell icon and you'll get a notification when any of those new videos are put onto the channel. Until I see you next time, stay creative, folks. Mm -hmm.